Hey, what's up? So, somehow DC have managed to make comic books cool again. I'm talking about the Absolute Universe. Now, if I was to go deep into how this Absolute Universe came to be, it would be convoluted because, my goodness, DC and Marvel have somehow, with this multiverse thing, managed to actually mess up the comic book industry. I mean, there, there are so many universes and they are so complicated that actually picking one and following it is just too much work. And I've, I've, I've actually ditched DC and Marvel focusing on more independent comic books or comic books from independent creators. For example, uh, the last one that I read was A Vicious Circle, which is three books complete, they're done, it's over, they don't extend it, they don't try to create another universe where they mix everything up. Just three books, they're done, and, and, and they're done with that. So with DC, now they've introduced a new universe, it's called the Absolute Universe, where we have Absolute Superman, we have Absolute Batman, we have Absolute Wonder Woman, and there is Absolute Flash coming uh, up, and another one, there's another one coming there. I don't, I don't know how far they're going to push it, but these books are going to have five issues. So I like the fact they've already defined how many issues are going to be there. So we are starting with issue one. So we have issue one of Absolute Batman, issue one of Absolute Superman, issue one of Ab Absolute Wonder Woman. And I think they're great. Now, why do I like each one of them? What do I have a problem with each one of them? Number one, Absolute Batman. I like the fact that they've actually made a Bruce Wayne that is relatable, Bruce Wayne that feels very much like the everyday man. Now, the thing that surprised me about this particular story is that it's not a Batman story. It's actually an Alfred story because we follow Alfred as he goes on a mission to get someone. And then through that mission, he ends up in Gotham and in Gotham, he discovers this character called Bruce Wayne. So Alfred is not the butler. Yeah, as Alfred is something much more bigger. And that's the most exciting part of this book because you get to follow him, discover what is going on underground and discover this character called Batman, you, you know, analyze him and try to follow him and that, try to actually get to him. And then you get to learn about now Batman, Bruce Wayne, and where he's coming from, what is happening to him. Now, what I like about the book is, number one, it feels like there's a lot. This felt like a very big book because there's a lot of things happening. There's Batman and the villains. There's Batman and his family, dad, mom. They do a very interesting twist. This Al Alfred has his own mission. There are other characters who are introduced at the end. And then we get the overall story between Alfred and Batman. And then there is an angle with, with Gordon. Because Gordon is also in the story, but not the Gordon that you're familiar with. So I like the fact that there's a lot that is packed into this story. Actually, it feels like a very, very big story. It feels like an epic book. It feels like an 80-page book. The other, now, the other, apart from that, the other thing that I actually really, really love about this book is that it has a very good ending. Yeah, it's the first issue, but it has a very satisfying ending. I went to the ending and I was like, wow, I'm surprised by that, just how they were able to complete everything without leaving you hanging. You know the way comic book companies like doing, you know, that moment when everything has just begun, when the action is just about to begin and then they cut, they tell you to wait for uh, issue two. No, no, they actually completed it. They kind of, uh, they kind of left the doors open for this other book, but they did a very clean ending to this particular story. What I did not like about the, this particular book was the exposition. There is just too much talking, there is uh, just too much words, I thought, because I came out of a vicious circle which had very little words and focused on the imagery. So that I had a small, it's not an issue, it's just a small gripe with that. And then now, when you go into Wonder Woman, uh, oh, Absolute Wonder Woman, Absolute Wonder Woman is like, it's called what? The Last Amazonia. It's a pretty interesting take on the Amazon character. Actually, if the best way to describe this book is uh, Diana or Wonder, Wonder Woman in a Hellboy story. Because she's raised up in hell. I like the way they used panels, especially when showing time as she grew. There's a way that they use panels. It's a very, very creative way of using panels to show time moving, you know, as she grows up. You know, as she develops in a very quick, simple, but very effective way. The one thing that I liked about it, unlike Batman and Absolute Superman, there is very less exposition. It's a very, it's driven by images, but there is just not so much text to go through, to actually read. I know most people love to see the intricate of the story, so they want a lot of exposition. They want to go, they want as much detail as possible, so they want to read as much as possible. I'm a very visual person, 
uh, I came, as I said, I came out of a vicious circle which used a lot of imagery and minimal text, and but they were able to use the imagery and the text to actually tell a complete story in a very smart way. So I was hoping that most of these guys will do it, but Absolute Wonder Woman does that very well. It, it applies enough text and enough imagery to just give you the story without bombarding you with a lot of text, with a lot of story. They, yes, you get the story. Yes, you get where she's coming from. But it doesn't really rely on the exposition. It relies on a lot of visuals. It relies uh, on a lot of visual storytelling. Now, what I did not like about the story was, number one, Wonder Woman's costume. You know, unlike Batman, because absolute Batman's costume is very recognizable. Yes, the bat symbol is obese, like the Dark Knight from Frank Miller, but he's a huge Batman, and then his suit is, a, is, is, is like a weapon. Everything from the cape to the, to the ears, they're all weapons. But still, you can recognize that this is actually Batman. You know, you can look at him and go like, yeah, that's Batman. I recognize, I recognize the DNA of Batman in this particular Batman. But with this Wonder Woman, they've changed everything. Everything. Uh, there's no appeal. You know, Wonder Woman is a very appealing character. But with this character design, what I did not like is that it does not have the DNA of Wonder Woman. Yeah, this is a totally different uh, character design. It, I think it was a lot of, it, it was a bit messy. There's just too much stuff on her. She has this red thing on, on that goes to the bottom. Then she has all these other things on her. Then the only part that is left uh, minimal is the hand and it has tattoos on it and there is hair and there are all this far. So she she's visually busy, unlike the Wonder Woman that you're familiar with, which makes for some messy action set pieces. That's what I thought. And this pose, for example, I thought it looked far more worse than I expected because there's now armor. There's just so much stuff on her that reduces the minimal recognizable Wonder Woman that we know. Basically, what I'm trying to say, if you were to take this Wonder Woman and present it to a comic book fan, they would have a, a hard time to actually recognize that character because she's just too busy there's just so much going on with her that you don't get that dna of uh, wonder woman that we recognize from all the other wonder woman ips i, I hope you understand what i'm saying so this was a totally uh, this was a 100 percent reinvention of the character yeah it doesn't feel like wonder woman this is just a different character who's given that name of wonder woman and given the w on the shirt just because it's not, you cannot recognize Wonder Woman with this character. Uh, uh, now, as I said, I liked the ex how they handled exposition. I liked how they used, utilized panels. Uh, the, the, the style is, you know, desaturated colors, really bright, hot, orange, pink colors, but they're still a bit desaturated. And then instead of like this, um, sh there are no shadows. The lighting is weird. There's very minimal lighting. There's minimal... Um, shadows and if the shadows is hatching whereby you use lines to actually create shadows and then the eyes are um, you, you know there's some emphasis on eyes there are a lot of strokes heavy strokes on the eyes so you notice them a lot and then I also like uh, now is that a bad thing with the line or a good thing it is it's stylistic it definitely stands out from the rest of the books and it has its own visual language so I appreciate that for that but it's not a very visually appealing book. Yeah, it's 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 it, it, it's kind of mediocre. But I think it's all in the in the lighting. I don't like it. It doesn't have actually technically it does not have a lot of lighting. It it, it follows a very flat design. So some, that's something I did not like. But outside that, I really like the story. I like the idea of how they were able to flip Diana. How they were able to flip her origins. How they dealt with the idea of Amazonians. Uh, I, I like the old mythology thing, her coming from hell, and I like the villain. I hated the way it completed because, unlike Batman, it does not feel complete. They give you that cliffhanger, that cliffhanger I was talking about. They give you that moment whereby something is about to happen. She has her lasso, then she uh, proclaims herself, and then the story ends. So you don't get that satisfi satisfying ending. It doesn't have that satisfying ending. It tethers you to the next book. I did not like that at all, especially coming from Batman. I, did not, I wish they would have just completed that and then gave space for the next issue. But generally, yeah, it, it's far more better than the two in story-wise, but how they were able to execute it. Yeah, yeah. So, the other one is Absolute Superman. Now, this one, 
This one was interesting in that they totally, they, they went back to the foundation, changed uh, Superman, Clark Kent's um, foundation, and totally flipped it upside down. What do I mean? They took uh, Kent and just turned his family, the idea of the S, played around with what it means in that particular universe, and tied it to our current universe. They, there's a time that they did that was very interesting. I'm not going to spoil it for you. And it goes back to show you what it meant, that symbol, what it meant for the family, and what it meant in that particular world. Now, what that does is that it, it humanizes Superman and his parents and makes them relatable. You know, makes, makes it relatable to us, makes it relatable to everyone else. It makes Superman a much more relatable character. Now, they also take, take a totally different... Uh, yes, whatever happened to Krypton happens to Krypton, but they take a totally different angle. You know, this is not the Clark, Clark Kent who crashes on Earth. This is a totally different Clark Kent. You know, he comes he comes here in a totally different way. Now, some of the things that I liked was, uh, number one, the suit. They did something very creative with the suit, though I feel like the suit was inspired by my, the idea from my story. Check that in this video. I talk about that. I talk about my graphic novel and why I think uh, my story inspired some of the ideas with the suit in this particular Superman suit. So the suit is kind of sentient, it kind of talks to Clark Kent, and it gives you an idea of how he works. So uh, uh, apart from that, the story felt more, I, I think the story was a bit pretentious, in that it tackles the idea of exploitation in a very interesting way. Though I like the peacemakers included in this story. So if you are a DC fan, there's something that they do with the concept of the peacemaker, which is actually I really, really appreciate that, that I was smiling as I was going through the pages, seeing those particular characters, you know, incorporated into this world. I was like, yes, this is so genius. In terms of powers, I like what they're able to do with the character that he is not 100%. He has his weaknesses and he cannot go to a particular level. Now, the big twist is that there's something that they do with the character of Lois Lane. I can't wait to see what they're going to do with that. But in general, this story feels, it gives you an idea of where Superman is coming from. Again, it's very foundational. It gives you the idea of where the character is from. It now sets you up for what is about to go down after the events of whatever happened here. Because there are other characters that are introduced, you're going to discover them. But generally, I think this is a very good foundational uh, this is a very good foundation for this particular character with the revelations with what you get to learn about him his past his current situation and where they might take all the characters because there's a company called lazarus which lois lane works for and it creates for an interesting just, just an, an interesting twist into what we recognize and what we know in terms of art style this is my favorite because it's very very colorful the colors pop there are very, there's a very good use of shadows. There's a, it's lit very, very well. The light work is fantastic. It's way better than what they did with Wonder Woman. And they go for some, they go for realism in terms of the character designs. And then the suits look good. I, I, I mean, when, wow, I love the, 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 the place, there are scenes that have crystals and the crystals look fantastic. Uh, the, 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 generally, the landscapes look good. There's a scene where, oh, by the way, I should, I should, by the way, I should mention this is not Clark Kent because the Kent family is totally different. So this is Kyle. Ka is it called Ka Kael? This is Kael. This is not Clark Kent. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is not Clark Kent because the Clark Kent story is does not exist in this particular one. So this is Kael. So Kael, we we see the planet of Krypton. We see everything you see the nature they, i mean the illustrations look fantastic in terms of coloring yeah this one is definitely my favorite in terms of artwork this is definitely my favorite if there was something to complain about i just thought the angle that they took with um the, the you know superman fighting for the small man i thought it was a bit pretentious i'm just going to be honest and whatever they're setting up in this universe whereby it's the regular versus the super rich or super big, I think it's a bit, I just feel that way, I'm sorry, I just feel that it's it's them being a bit preachy, like, look, we're creating stories that fight against the big man, that's just how I feel, but generally, 
I did not have a problem with the, the, the Superman story. I thought it, it was very effective in setting up what it's setting up. But I don't feel that way because of the quality of the artworks. The artworks were really good. Yeah, the artworks were super impressive. So basically that's it. This is a story that you can pick up if you've never read any DC stories because this is a genuinely good start. This is a very solid start. It's a very clean start. 